And good morning. Coming up, we're following the breaking news overnight. Another mass shooting. This one in Philadelphia, leading, leaving at least four people dead, two others injured. With a suspect in custody this morning, we are live on the scene with the latest. Also ahead, the dangerous holiday heat and severe storms that could affect our cookout plans and our travel plans. We'll be tracking it all. And how about this? 50 pies, 50 states. Some great ways to add flavor to your 4th of July gathering. That's coming up right here on GMA. Stay with us. Checking Transguide right now, see how things are looking out there. No problems to report. Still zoomed in at 37 and Bronick Lake, but we do not see an incident out there. Might see some more traffic for the lake itself later today since it is Independence Day. A popular spot on the St. Mary's Strip will close its doors this month. Squeeze box owner Aaron Pena says two years of construction in the area for the roads has hurt his business's bottom line. He told KZAP via text, the losses sustained were just too great to recover from. That construction project originally scheduled to wrap up in October of last year. As of last month, the city said work was now in the final stages. Pena's post to social media says he's planning to host farewell parties and activities throughout July. Squeeze box open along the St. Mary's Strip back in 2016. Hey, quick heads up. Uh, despite the holiday, trash pickup will go on as normal today in San Antonio. When in Washington, night in Philadelphia kills four people. It's the latest mass shooting in a rash of deadly gun violence across the nation. The details coming up. And here at home, looking out there with live cam, we're at 79 degrees for now. We know things will warm up, but yesterday that cloud cover was a real treat. Maybe we'll see a little bit of that today. Eh, we're going to ask Mike about that. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, everybody. Rise and shine. It is 6 a.m. on your Tuesday, July 4th. Happy Independence Day. Yep. Happy 4th of July. Thank you for starting your morning with us. And if you have plans, we're going to go ahead and check in with Mike to see how you can prepare for the fireworks and all the festivities today. Well, like with any other day, lots of sunscreen, lots of water, but it's going to be just a fantastic day. And it is a fantastic day to celebrate our country. But uh, yeah, if you are uh, heading on out, first of all, we've got just a smattering of clouds out there as of right now. And that's pretty much going to be the case throughout the day. Sort of a mixture of sunshine and clouds. Best way to uh, put it. A little more sunshine at times. We do have a few, well, one or two leftovers. But as expected, those are continuing to die down. Those few little sprinkles in parts of the hill country. And then down there, well off to the uh, the southwest. There may be one or two showers. A couple of thunderstorms popping up later on this afternoon. But if you have outdoor plans, I wouldn't even really hardly consider it. I mean, it, again, it's going to be very few and far between. 82 is the heat index right now. 85 at Canyon Lake, 84 Pleasanton. Humidity is actually down just a just a slight bit compared to yesterday, but a little more refreshing when you step outside. Mold is on the high side. And if you are heading off to the uh, fireworks tonight, again, as I mentioned, there is a very small chance for just a stray shower left over, and that would be earlier on in the evening. Sun goes down at 838 so it's going to be nice fireworks viewing weather a little bit on the the breezy side but kind of sultry tonight what's in store in the next couple of days what's in store this weekend details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes if you are heading out this morning traffic authority take a look around town as you would expect being a holiday there's not much going on over there 37 at Bronick Lake there were uh, some flashing lights and a couple of emergency vehicles over there, but nothing showing up as of right now. Let me pop a couple of other Transguide cameras very quickly here. 90 Medio Creek, everything's moving along very well there. 10, 15, 16, and 281 at San Pedro. No problems there. We are going to continue to keep an eye on the pavement, see if there's anything going on this morning. Steph, Mark. We have new details this morning on a San Antonio man who was shot while watering in his front yard. Right now he's in the hospital and expected to be okay. Police say it happened Monday afternoon on Flanders Avenue, just west of I-35. Victim told police he was watering his grass when he suddenly heard something and then felt a pain in his chest. He was helped by some neighbors who called 911 and was taken to a nearby hospital. Police say the man had not been in any fights and they don't know who shot him. Well, a Florida man and a dozen undocumented migrants are in custody after a chase involving a big rig down near Catula.
Texas Department of Public Safety posted this video of the high-speed pursuit in LaSalle County. DPS reports Eduardo Arras was behind the wheel of the truck last Tuesday when authorities tried to pull him over on I-35 for a traffic violation. Officials say that he refused to stop and sped up. Eventually, the truck went off the road and the driver plus several migrants bailed out. Arradas was arrested along with 12 migrants. He now faces state criminal charges for smuggling and evading. Meanwhile, storms could disrupt July 4th plans from Boston to D.C. and across the Midwest. Across the West, over 30 million people are facing heat alerts with Las Vegas hitting 112 degrees yesterday. Fire warnings have been issued in the Pacific Northwest. However, if you're looking to beat the heat, some ski slopes are open in parts of California for some July 4th skiing. Thanks to last winter's epic snowfall, which measured more than 56 feet. Well, due this morning, most municipal and federal offices are closed today, but police, fire and EMS will all be on duty. Some city pools will also be open in case you need to take a break from the heat. Trash pickup is scheduled normally, according to the city of San Antonio this morning. We have a complete list of what is open and closed on our website at ksat.com. And of course, we have a reminder this to be smart this 4th of July. Last year, 11 firework related deaths were reported in the U.S., along with over 10,000 trips to the emergency room. Most people hurt by fireworks this time last year were kids. Even what seems like the most innocent of fireworks, like sparklers, can be dangerous. Sparklers accounted for 600 ER visits. Many of them were for burns on the hands, fingers, head, face, and ears. Fireworks aren't toys and they're not for children. They're burning at 2,000 degrees, it's like a blowtorch. And if you will be handling fireworks tonight or today, don't forget the basics of safety. Make sure they are legal in your area. Keep a bucket of water or hose nearby. Only light one firework at a time and step away quickly and never try to relight or pick up fireworks that haven't been ignited. The Department of Public Safety will have extra troopers on the roads today and tonight. They're reminding everyone to celebrate safely. So plan ahead if you are drinking. Move over or slow down if police, fire, EMS, or tech stop vehicles or tow trucks are stopped with their lights on. Everyone in your vehicle should be using a seatbelt. Stay off your phone and be aware of other drivers. Don't cut in front of large trucks or slam on your brakes in front of them. And looking ahead, there's a lot of events happening in and around our area for Independence Day. SeaWorld is celebrating the 4th with their annual fireworks spectacular. That show is expected to start at 9.45 tonight. Guests are encouraged, of course, to dress in red, white, and blue to join in on the fun. And the City of San Antonio's official HEB 4th of July celebration returns to Woodlawn Lake this year. It all kicks off at 11 o'clock this morning, goes all the way through 9.30 tonight for the big fireworks show. There will be games live entertainment, of course, the fireworks. The event is free and open to the public. And just a heads up, no overnight camping is allowed out of Woodlawn Lake. Expect some heavy traffic in that area all day long. It will be busy. And one more reminder, Fredericksburg's 4th of July celebrations will start at 10 this morning, ending with a fireworks show at 9.30 at night. Leon Valley is starting their activities at 7.30 this morning until 9.30 tonight. So for a bigger list of the 4th of July events happening in our area, you can head over to our website at ksat.com. Happy 4th, everybody. Right now, it is 606, 79 degrees. And still ahead before 630, fans are flocking to New York's Coney Island for a 4th of July favorite. What fans need to know about the famous hot dog eating contest before it starts. And after the break, San Antonio Spurs got off to a hot start on the West Coast last night. The first game of the Summer League play. The highlights coming up next. And looking out there with a live cam, looking beautiful this 4th of July. Just, you know, take a minute to enjoy it. Hopefully some of you guys have today off and can enjoy the fireworks later tonight. We'll be right back. And welcome back at 610. Spurs fans got to see their team in action for the first time this summer. Took on the Hornets in the Summer League in Sacramento and came away with the win. Final score 98-77. At one point, our guys were leading by 32 points. I saw that. And for more Spurs coverage, let's check in with our own Larry Ramirez in Sacramento. All right, we're outside the Spurs locker room at Julian Champagne. And Julian, talk about the team effort today. I mean, you guys looked good out there. Yeah, I'd say 10 out of 10 on the effort. I think that was the biggest part of, you know, what we spoke about in the locker room is just go out there and play hard, you know. So I think we went out there today, and that's what we did. 
you were flowing from the get-go all the way to the end. How about your performance tonight? Uh, you know, I, like I said before, I got to get to my teammates, and they found me early. Um, throughout the whole the whole camp, they were like, you know, just shoot the basketball, do what you do, and, and we'll find you. And, and yes, yeah, so I think the team chemistry kind of helped me to, you know, get into the flow. Yeah, when you guys are playing like that, I mean, everything was working for you well. How fun is that? It's super fun. It's super fun just going out there and knowing, like, no matter what happens, everybody's on the same page. We're playing hard, playing together. Um, so that's super fun. Tell us about your uh, three-point celebration. Yeah, before the game, Willis told me you know, he, need, he needed one. I had a couple, so I gave him a couple. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, some, some I'm trying to, trying to perfect my celebrations. Maybe. We'll see. Well, I think it was pretty good. I appreciate that. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. All right. All right, Spurs look great, and they'll be back at it again tomorrow night when they play the Lakers in the Summer League team uh, at 5 p.m. Then it's on to Vegas and Victor Winbayama's expected debut, which is Friday night, Spurs against the Hornets, 8 p.m. our time. It is scheduled to air on ESPN. Yay, I'm glad you looked that up. So now we're aware. We're locked in on to, we have Friday night plans yes. now. Yes, we do. For sure. And Mike, I think you were kind of going through the cameras there. Yeah, just uh, looking around town and really don't see any problems anywhere, as you would expect. Uh, there's not a whole lot of traffic out there, given the fact that it is a holiday. 151 over at 410, 10 at Martinez Creek and 35 at Benz Engelman. Everything's looking pretty good there. 37 over there at uh, State Highway 97. And you're saying you're giving me a zero as far as my performance? Uh, oh. Zero accidents? <laughs> okay. You know, no. there, are, there are three disabled vehicles around town, but yeah, we're so far, we're living large this morning. No, you always do an excellent job. Don't worry about that. <laughs> I'm walking over and he's going. I've never, ever. He's just trying to help you in, out. In all these years, I've never given you a zero to mm -hmm. my knowledge. Negative numbers sometimes. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. So, hey, happy 4th of July, everybody. Yeah. In this picture, I mean, I could just show this. It's pretty. 24-7, 365. Beautiful. Beautiful view of old glory there. I just love that. Mm -hmm. yeah. and my I mean, quick story. So I was just over in Normandy, France. Yes. Our tour guide course is French. And he said, if you're American on this trip, I want to thank you. If it were not for you, there's no doubt. I would be speaking German today. Oh, Indeed. Wow. And you said the, the National Cemetery over there is technically American soil, right? Uh, it's yeah. French soil, but it's, it's treated as American soil and it's operated by uh, um, American Cemetery Association. And if you see somebody in uniform today, give them a big thank you mm -hmm. for that. All right. Here we go. We've got a beautiful view out there right now. Just a smattering of clouds showing up this morning. And uh, just to check on radar once again, maybe a couple little squeaks of rain left over, but that's obviously continuing to uh, fizzle on out there. 79 degrees right now, so we have dropped down one notch. 73 at Bernie Stage, 80 still Divine Casterville. Humidity is... It's there. I mean, you start to get 74 for Dew Point at Randolph, down around uh, Pleasanton, Canyon Lake 73. You notice it when you step outside. So we do have a bit of a heat index to deal with. 82 here in town, 83 Castroville as of right now. Not anything just outrageous. And we'll drop down to maybe another couple of notches here and there. Then we warm up through the 80s, get up to 90 at noon, and 10%, 20% chance for a couple of showers comes back into the picture later on this afternoon. This is going to be few and far between at best. If you have outdoor plans, head to the pool, uh, picnics, fireworks tonight, all the festivities going on around town, I wouldn't really worry about it at all. Again, there will just be one or two of them out there, and that's going to be about the extent of it. And then we'll stay in the 90s going in through the uh, evening hours. So satellite picture, we had obviously more of those showers earlier, and they have uh, since fizzled out. And there's really not a heck of a lot going on around the country. A couple of showers well up there to the north, but nothing upstream as far as we are concerned that is going to bring about any dramatic changes to our weather. That high is off to the west of us. The one that was plaguing us the past couple of weeks sort of fizzle on off and just dis disappeared, if you will, off to the east. That high is just far enough off to the west, keeping us in this sort of northerly flow in the atmosphere, a little disturbance, and plus it's not sitting on top of us, so it's not like a lid on top of the atmosphere. However, 
It is going to continue to move in our direction as we head in toward the weekend, and that just means as it settles on top of us, rain chances pretty much go out of the picture once we get into the weekend, and this thing's going to move on in here, and that just means it is going to be getting hotter as we head on in toward the weekend. So we'll stay in the upper 90s the next few days. Again, a stray shower to here or there. Not a big deal. Perhaps a slightly better chance on Thursday. Then triple digits again Saturday, Sunday, going into next week. Eesh, 101. I know. <laughs> All right. Well, just enjoy today for right now. Thank you, Mike. Yes. 616, 78 degrees. And just ahead, coastal towns are deploying new technology to track sharks and keep beachgoers safe after reports of shark sightings and attacks. How it works in your GMA first look. Martial arts is my passion. I work out whenever I can. But with my moderate to severe eczema, it can be tough. My skin was so uncomfortable. The itching was so bad. Now I'm staying ahead of my eczema. There's a power inside all of us to live our passion. And Dupixent works on the inside to help heal your skin from within. It helps block a key source of inflammation inside the body that can cause eczema so adults can have long-lasting, clearer skin and fast itch relief. Serious allergic reactions can occur that can be severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems such as eye pain or vision changes, including blurred vision, joint aches and pain, or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines without talking to your doctor. Healing from a thin is a powerful thing. Ask your eczema specialist how Dupixent can help heal your skin from within. In this morning's GMA First Look, great white warning. The sharks are returning right on time now. The Cape Cod National Seashore is urging July 4th beachgoers to be, quote, shark smart due to what experts say is a surging population. There are a large number of white sharks that do stop in Cape Cod uh, as they migrate north because there's a tremendous seal population there. And it's not the only place in the country on alert. In New York, a 15-year-old surfer was bitten off Fire Island Monday. The 15-year-old thankfully surviving and taken to the hospital. The injuries were somewhat minor, just uh, a couple of bites to his foot. And, and once again, as we were able to get into a local hospital to get them examined by physicians. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll tell you about some of the new technology coastal towns are using to keep beachgoers safe. With your GMA First Look, I'm Will Reeve, ABC News, New York. To some late breaking news, some new information just into our newsroom. A gunman is in police custody after shooting six people in Philadelphia, killing five. As ABC's M1 tells us, the victims were apparently shot at random with no known connection to the shooter. Multiple shots fired. A guy with a long gun. Overnight, a July 4th gathering turned deadly in Philadelphia after a heavily armed gunman wearing a bulletproof vest opened fire into the streets, killing five and injuring two boys, police say. The victims, for now, believed to be random. All we know is that this person decided to leave their home and to target individuals. The shooter, identified as a 40-year-old man, now in custody, along with another who police believe picked up a firearm and started shooting at the suspect. The incident happening over several city blocks in the southwestern neighborhood of King Sessing until police cornered the suspect into an alley. They were able to uh, get him into custody. I can't even describe the level of bravery and courage that was shown. The department hailing the officers for potentially preventing more deaths. This shooting the latest in a rash of deadly gun violence across the nation. In Baltimore, police are still trying to hunt down a gunman who they say opened fire into a block party, killing 18-year-old Alaya Gonzalez and 20-year-old Kylis Fagbemi and injuring more than 25 others. People were everywhere running, out of breath, crying because they witnesses. We won't stop until we find those responsible and hold them accountable. Authorities now offering $28,000 for any information leading to an arrest. Already this year in the U.S., a staggering toll of at least 340 mass shootings, according to the Gun Violence Archive. 
And putting that number into context, in 2018, the Gun Violence Archive recorded 336 mass shootings for the entire year. Gun violence had been dropping for decades, according to the CDC, until it began spiking in 2020, with no concrete answers as to why and how rates can get back to pre-COVID levels. M1, ABC News, Washington. In your morning consumer headlines, you might see a new app in your app store. Facebook's parent company Meta is rolling out a competitor to Twitter called Threads. Since Elon Musk's whirlwind takeover of Twitter, Meta says Threads focuses on public conversations. The new app will use your Instagram login. Meanwhile, it's not the best timing, but in 30 days, Twitter will be moving its popular TweetDeck viewing tool behind a paywall. The new version of TweetDeck helps monitor other users' content. However, Twitter says the new version will only be for verified users who pay $8 per month. And using streaming service Tidal is raising the price of its hi-fi subscription by a dollar from $9.99 to $10.99 a month. The increase will happen August 1st. Tidal is the latest music streaming service to raise its subscription price. Apple Music and Amazon Music have also raised their prices in the past year. As the USA rocks out to its 247th birthday, fans are flocking to New York's Coney Island for the annual Nathan's Famous International Hot Dog Eating Competition. 16 men and 15 women are competing for $20,000 in cash prizes and what's become as much of a 4th of July tradition as fireworks. So Miki Sudo set the women's record at 48 and a half hot dogs and buns in 2020. This year, fans are asking if the king, Joey Chestnut, can beat his own record, 76 hot dogs and buns in 10 minutes. 76 hot dogs and buns, a lot of humidity tomorrow, very likely. Can you break it? Oh, I'm going to be sweating. It's not going to be pretty, but uh, I'm going to do whatever it takes to get those dogs down, and uh, I'll, I'll be making a run for the record. The Indiana resident has made millions in the sport, second records that may never be beat. He says winning in front of thousands of people on the 4th of July is the best feeling. Looking ahead, Powerball jackpot is now an estimated $546 million. No one won last night, and someone could take home the grand prize for the next drawing tomorrow night. Last time somebody won was April 19th, so if you want to try your luck, the next drawing is July 5th. That's tomorrow evening. Keep in mind, tickets' odds uh, of winning are less than 1 in 292 billion. A Powerball ticket costs $2. If you'd like to play tonight, Mega Millions jackpot is up to $400 million. That would be nice. Time now, 625 and 78 degrees for now. Still ahead of 630 fireworks, many people's favorite thing about 4th of July. But what happens after things go boom? The best way to dispose of fireworks coming up. Plus, for me, I'm going to make it count. And right now, making it count is whoop it up on cancer's butt. An NFL tight end speaking out this morning on a remarkable recovery after what he calls a life and death fight away from the field. That story still ahead. Checking Transguide stalled vehicle at 410 and Ray Ellison in the northbound lanes of 410. We also have one eastbound 410 at Cherry Ridge, but no accidents. We'll be back. This morning on GMSA, San Antonio police investigating a fight between neighbors that sent one to the hospital. Why it didn't end there for the suspects. Plus, two teens were killed in a crash in an area neighbors say is prone to accidents. What they want done to make sure tragedy doesn't strike again. Independence Day, take a look outside with live cam. We have some clouds in the air tonight, fireworks tonight. We'll see what the forecast is looking like with Mike in a moment. Hey, good morning. Happy 4th of July. Thanks for joining us today. Happy Independence Day. Thank you for starting your morning with us. Before we go to Mike, there are some holiday closures we do want to let you know about this morning. Most municipal and federal offices are closed, but police, EMS, and fire personnel will remain on duty. Some city pools will also be open in case you need a break from the heat. Trash pickup as normal today in the city of San Antonio. We have a complete list of what's open and closed on KSAT.com. All right, now we check. Oh, thought we're we were all going to say hi. hi. There. Come back in a three shot. Yeah. We'll, we'll be all in our red, white, and blue yeah, here. So, yeah. Happy 4th. Happy 4th. I love your American flag. Yeah. Oh, thank Thanks. you. Very, Very appropriate. Much. And those well, Jeff's got the popcorn ready. I got popcorn ready for ah. indoor plans. And the red, the red and white stripes. Yeah. 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 Popcorn bugs. Yeah. Well, nice hopefully time. you are adorned in red, white, and blue today. And it's going to be a fantastic day. We've got a couple of clouds out there. Yes, it is. 
hot, but you would expect that for a July 4th. We are at 79 right now, 2.72. So yeah, enough humidity around to where you notice it when you step outside. And still those few showers, well, one or two stragglers there in Bandera County and down around uh, just to the southwest of Catula. But that's pretty much about it. Those fizzle on out as expected right around sunrise. 82 is the heat index here in town. 83 at Castroville. It feels like 84 right now at Pleasanton. And at least we're not going to have outrageously high humidity later on this afternoon. It will drop down somewhat. So the heat index is not going to be a huge issue. Molds on the high side. The update account comes out in about an hour or so, but that did drop down from the previous day's reading. So that little bit of leftover shower to the west, otherwise warm and humid. Later on today, 98, a straight shower thunderstorm this I really wouldn't get too concerned and or excited about as far as rain chances one or two of them out there few and far between at best now rest of the week upper 90s about the same situation one or two showers perhaps a slightly better chance of rain on Thursday after that Triple digits are going to make a return for the weekend. All those details coming up in just a couple of minutes. If you are having to uh, hit the roads this morning, take a look at some of the uh, trans guide cameras around town right now. Yeah, pretty much got the highways to yourself. 151 over there at 410 and then another one over there. 35 Ben Zingelman. No problems anywhere showing up 1604 at Pat Booker. Make sure you do drive carefully. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. And right now we want to get to some late breaking news out of Fort Worth. Police there say at least three people are dead and eight others are hurt following an overnight shooting. Details are limited and right now it's not cleared what led up to that shooting. So far, no arrests have been made. New this morning, an investigation underway after a stabbing overnight on the west side of town. This was the scene a little before 2.30 a.m. on Tulipan Walk and San Fernando, not far from I-10. Police tell us two men got into an argument when one of them stabbed the other in the shoulder. He was taken to a hospital and is expected to be okay. At last check, no arrests have been made. Back to a top story we've been following closely this week. New details about those three San Antonio police officers charged in the murder of Melissa Pettis. Chief William McManus says Pettis was experiencing a mental health crisis when officers encountered her while responding to a call last month. Now, Perez was holding a hammer when the officers shot her through a patio window and door, but the chief says the officers did not follow department training or policy at the time. On Monday, SAPD released the officers' suspension records. One of the officers, Nathaniel Villalobos, had no prior suspensions leading up to the June 23rd shooting. However, Sergeant Alfred Flores and Officer Eleza Alejandro were suspended several times between 2018 and this year. Now, SAPD records show Florida has had at least four prior suspensions dating back to 2018. The 14-year veteran was disciplined for several issues during that five-year time period. That includes leaving his assigned section on duty without permission, taking more breaks than allowed, and leaving evidence from a call in the back of his patrol car for several weeks. Meanwhile, Alejandro, a five-year veteran, had three prior suspensions, all reported during 2020. Police disciplinary documents show the reasons for Alejandro's suspensions included failure to arrest a driver with active warrants, using profanity, and causing damage at a home while responding to a call. Alejandro Flores and Bia Lobos were suspended without pay last month and are going through the termination process. Right now, they are out on bond. Well, to other news this morning, a former San Antonio police officer facing charges after he was arrested several counties away from the Alamo City. Stephen Mobley arrested Sunday night up in Williamson County near Austin and charged with criminal mischief and trespassing. He was off duty at the time of his arrest. Mobley was relieved from his position yesterday. A second person has died and a third is in the hospital after a deadly crash in West Bear County on Sunday afternoon. The 18 year old driver died at the scene on Tally Road and right now the medical county Bear County Medical Examiner's Office is reporting that the 19 year old passenger died in the hospital as well. The Bear County Sheriff's Office said a black Camaro was speeding and rolled over the car's roof and entire front end came off with pieces of the car scattered across the scene. Neighbors in that area say speeding has been an issue since Tally Road expanded to two lanes in each direction without a stop sign or traffic light. Things have to happen to make things safer for everybody because it's not going to be the person that's speeding that's necessarily always going to be the person injured. It's going to be a family that's 
that's on the road with them or a new driver. People who spoke with KSET say they would like to see a combination of stop signs, speed bumps, traffic and streetlights to help. We emailed the Bear County Sheriff's Office to find out just how many crashes had been reported along Tally Road and are still waiting to hear back. As we continue to deal with extreme summer heat, San Antonio has been dealing with some water main breaks. One family on the southwest side dealing with more than a soggy street. Look at this. The break they caught on camera last week sent rocks flying and onto their roof. Also damaged a vehicle. Unfortunately, there's nothing that can be done to prevent water main breaks due to hot temperatures and soil drying out, causing ground shifts. The homeowner is worried it will happen again. It is concerning. They were there like all night trying to patch it up and fix it, but who knows if, if it'll happen again. According to Saws, many breaks do not impact customers unless water has to be shut off in order to make repairs. Well, this morning, a member of the New Orleans Saints kicked off the holiday with some positive news. Tight end Foster Moreau says he's won his life and death fight away from the field. Here's ABC's Rihanna Nally. This morning, NFL tight end Foster Moreau's future is looking brighter than the 4th of July. After battling cancer, the 26-year-old announcing he's now in the clear, writing, I've been blessed with the news that I am in full remission from Hodgkin lymphoma. Our prayers were answered. Let's control what we can control, and let's have a lot of fun doing it. Moreau was diagnosed in April after undergoing a physical with the New Orleans Saints, his hometown team, which he visited as a free agent. He spoke with Good Morning America's Michael Strahan about the devastating news. What went through your mind when you heard that? I mean, I, I felt strong. I felt like I was running well. I mean, my off-season training was going just fine. And... Um, then he tells me something's there that I, I could have never imagined, and it rocks my world. But through it all, he kept a positive attitude. It sounds like you are preparing for this like it's game day. For me, there's, there's no other way to look at it, right? So I'm preparing for my opponent. I'm preparing for being on an IV for six, seven, eight hours, whatever it takes. After his diagnosis, Moreau said he would pause his NFL career to focus on his health. The Saints showing their support, saying we're still interested in him as a player and even more as a person. And just a month later, the team signed Moreau to a three-year, $12 million contract. You only have a finite amount of time on this earth. Um, for me, I'm going to make it count. And right now, making it count is whoop it up on cancer's butt. Rhianna Nally, ABC News, New York. Back here at home, San Antonio Pets Alive needs your help after an emergency forced the group to move every animal out of their west side facility. The shelter's air conditioner gave out on Monday, closing the building for at least three weeks. And as we reported yesterday on GMSA, all the animals need somewhere to go. Fosters were able to come pick up animals for a short time Monday morning, but 10 dogs still have nowhere to go. We urgently need fosters to step forward and help us. Thankfully, there's still time to help. Pets Alive is closed today, but tomorrow, Wednesday, people are encouraged to come pick up a foster dog. If you are interested in helping out, you can find this information and a pet foster application on our website at ksat.com. And I'm sure somebody watching right now wants to help. 639, 78 degrees. Up next, fireworks are a 4th of July favorite, but what happens after the smoke clears? The best way to dispose of fireworks still ahead. Hi, welcome back. It is 642. So popping fireworks is a lot of fun, but it's important to stay safe. Our producer Haley Powers takes us to Mr. W Fireworks and explains the steps you need to take to properly dispose of them. We're just pretty much looking for some small fireworks that we can pop off safely. The 4th of July is here and we want to make sure that you are staying safe. And one of the things that you need to remember when shooting fireworks is how to properly dispose of them. So one thing you're going to need whenever you are getting ready to shoot fireworks is to have a bucket of water handy. And another thing you're going to need is a plastic bag ready to put the fireworks in that can be tied so your fireworks cannot reignite when you put them in the trash. There's proper ways to do it. You can have a water hose with you and make sure you put water over the, uh, the fireworks when they're done. Uh, just use every precaution they can. Bucket, whatever they have available at their homes or wherever they're popping the fireworks at. 
I douse them in water uh, and then I just throw them in the trash. I make sure they're all properly out though. So now that you've shot your fireworks, you want to make sure that they are in the water for 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, we will pour the water out and then grab the fireworks and put them in the bag. Now that we have our fireworks in our plastic bag, all we need to do, throw them in the dumpster. Thank you, Haley. And you can learn more about firework safety on our website. Just head over to kset.com and look for the story. The city of San Antonio's official HEB 4th of July celebration is returning to Woodlawn Lake this year. Kicks off at 11 o'clock this morning, goes through at least 930 tonight. There'll be games, live entertainment, of course, fireworks this evening. It's free and open to the public, but heads up again. No overnight camping at Woodlawn Lake is allowed this year. So not this morning and then again, not tonight. Yeah, not after the fireworks. You're too tired. Maybe catch an Uber. <laughs> Here are a few other 4th of July activities happening in our area. The city of Shirts will hold their 47th annual 4th of July Jubilee at Pickerel Park. City of Terrell Hills will hold their annual 4th of July parade that starts at 10 this morning. Oak Park Northwood neighborhood will host their annual Independence Day parade, which is our city's largest residential parade. So this all begins at 9 this morning and the American Legion in Seguin will hold its 4th of July parade at noon. You can find a list of all the 4th of July events on our website at kset.com. And please be vigilant. If you see something, say something, please. Uh, uh, also on our website, a complete list of where you can watch all the fireworks today and tonight. List includes places throughout the Alamo City and the Hill Country as well. To see the full list, all you need to do is scan this QR code on your screen. It's a shortcut to ksat.com where our complete coverage lives. Yeah, I'm excited about seeing the fireworks out happy there. 4th. Yeah, yes. Happy 4th. Happy 4th. What are you doing, traffic, like? real quick? All right, let's do that, and then uh, we'll show you some of these pictures. First of all, and you said there's an incident there, 35 South at Riddiman. Yeah, hang on. Maybe I'll back up here. So we have an accident. Southbound 35 at Riddiman. Only one lane block might be on the frontage road, but mm -hmm. I haven't seen it on trans. Have you guys seen it yet on trans? No, I, was I haven't seen it pop up. I okay. cameras yeah. and uh, didn't see anything out there. But otherwise, I mean, there's not much traffic, obviously. Right. Very, very today, light so today. Just, you know, do take it easy. All right, we were talking about the festivities at Woodlawn Lake, and this is a picture, obviously, highlighting the full oh, wow. moon yesterday. Pretty. Great picture, and that's going to be where a lot of people gather tonight. Then. Uh, yeah. I want to go back to a couple of days ago and great picture to show on the 4th of July. This was the Armed Forces Parade on Sunday. Look at all fantastic. those fantastic folks pick. in uniform there. Yeah, I love that. Yep. Wow, Very what a nice. great event for our city. And they're mm -hmm. even on the bridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah all the, the Army folks lined up there on the bridge. And yeah, thank you very much for that picture. Thank you to all those folks in uniform as well. That's great. That just kind of gives you gives you shivers looking at pictures like that. Anyway, uh, starting off this morning, we have got just a couple of clouds left over. And uh, if you're going to the fireworks tonight, it's going to be a beautiful evening for it. Temperatures, yeah, it's going to be a sultry evening. Now, there is that very small chance for a stray shower to late this afternoon, early evening. I wouldn't even really concern yourself with it too awfully much, but then we'll just have partly cloudy skies tonight. And it's going to be, like I said, just fantastic out there. 79 degrees right now, 80 Castroville and uh, more 70s than 80s on the map. That's always nice to see throughout the rest of the morning. We may drop down another couple of degrees and then warm up pretty quickly. 90 at noon and we'll top off at 98 later on this afternoon. So we're still going to be four above normal. Again, there's that small chance for a stray shower too. And I almost really wouldn't concern yourself with it. Uh, heat index readings. Yes, it is going to be pretty hot there around Catula, Victoria, but elsewhere, not anything too outrageous as far as the heat index. So here's the computer model does have a stray shower popping up around here. Again, this tends to paint things in with a broad brush, so it will just be one or two here or there, and that's going to be later on uh, this afternoon, this evening, and then tomorrow about the same situation. Thursday, perhaps a slightly better chance 30% chance to see a stray shower or two. Then we get into Friday and uh, the weekend. Other than perhaps something trying to come in here off the coastal plain, that's pretty much going to be about it. And we have that area of high pressure, which is going to continue to slide on in here. And it's going to just uh, move in, set up camp just about right on top of us. What that means is 
we will put the lid on any rain trying to form up with that sitting on top of us, kind of like what we had last week. And then it also means that's going to start to heat things up. So with that high pushing down in the atmosphere, we are going to be seeing some more triple digit temperatures by the weekend. Upper 90s today, tomorrow, Thursday, Friday, a stray shower or two here or there, maybe. And then Thursday, a slightly better chance. But yeah, we uh, unfortunately... Get back to the triple digit temperatures, plenty of sunshine this weekend going into the uh, the first part of next week. And just to put it in perspective, haven't even hit the historically hottest time of the year, which is the first couple of weeks of August. That's true. Well, maybe it'll be the same or maybe we'll be used to it by then, right? Do you ever get used to this? No, anyway. No, oh, no. no. Not really. And I remember how I mentioned to you guys that I was going to do a brisket for the morning team. I picked next Tuesday, and I didn't know Mike was up <laughs> next week. So I'm going to save you somebody. Aww. Um, okay. Man, this is kind of crazy. If you're any kind of friend, you deliver it to my house. I know. Oh. I know. I don't want there to be a beef between us. Hey, 49, what? 78 degrees. <laughs> Let's look out there with live cam. 78 degrees, like Mark said. Looking beautiful out there. Uh, enjoy this 4th of July morning. It's a good morning to have a 4th of July parade. I can't be mad at Andrew Zimbert anymore. <laughs>